create your own self checking Google Sheet spelling or word test. So uh, recently I have um, created these little um, decode the word picture prompts and what I thought was I would combine them with conditional formatting in Google Sheets. So how it works is these are set up to self mark or self check student input of the word. So they look at the first sounds um, of the picture type it in push enter and if they are correct it will change it to blue if they are not correct it will keep it as red and down the bottom here I've got a selection of examples um, based on the New Zealand word colors high frequency word colors we've got magenta red yellow blue and green and the same rules apply they simply click and enter in the letters and providing that it is correct, it will change to green. So to create your own example, I'm just going to duplicate this one here to show you how to work it. I'm gonna delete the pictures. Cool. So first of all, you want to, well, you don't have to use a picture. You can use any type of prompt that you'd like. I'm using pictures here because I want my students to work on decoding the skills. So I'm just going to insert an image in the cell. And I'm going to use any example that I've got. When it loads. because of course it's going to take a while now that I'm video recording. Oh, here we go. So I'm going to browse. I'm going to upload this one. Cool, so it's gonna upload that image into the cell that I have selected and it's gonna insert it in the same size as well here. So you can insert as many words, uh, as many pictures or prompts as you want. I just have mine set up in lots of six. Then over here, we need to be able to format the cell to have it change color or to have it show however you would like it to be. So we're going to come up to format, conditional formatting. And then over here, it's already got some format rules. So I'm just going to delete those just for the sake of this video. So right now, they're blank. This one here, this particular cell is blank. There are no rules, no formats that it's looking for. I'm going to click add another rule and it's going to tell me where do I want it to apply to. So D5, which is here, D5. Format cells if is not empty. Now I'm going to look down for text contains because when I want it to show the correct answer, I want it to be able to change color. So I've got H, E, L, P. Then I can choose the color, any color you want. You could have it green, pink, purple, you name it, whatever color. I'm just going to click green. I'm going to click done. Then you might want to add another rule for if it doesn't contain the right answer. So text does not contain, and then you type in the same word. So that means if it's not currently containing the word that you are after, it will represent this rule here. So then you can test it. You can type in your word to see if it works. Perfect. Then you can delete it and it will change back. So when you're adding rules, there are different types of rules that it could be. Text does not contain, text starts with, text ends with, text is exactly. Um, and if you have issues with kids spelling and you know that they might spell it incorrectly, you could use text is exactly. So that means it will look exactly the same as the answer that you want. Or text contains is very similar, but if they spell a word that has the word in it, it can sometimes correct it, even though it might not be correct. You can change the color, you can make it font, different text different color, bold, italic, underlined, there's all sorts of rules, and that means when students or the user types in the word, it will then bring up all of the rules that you're looking for. So now if I click on the square, I can see it's telling me there's two rules here. If I click on this square, it's showing me the previous rules from the duplicated um, sheet that I have. So it's currently duplicated all of the green cells and the green conditional formats. So I can simply just delete these and then start again following the same process. 
Now this is really great for um, self-marking. Students get instant feedback on their answers, which is great. It color codes, so those visual students that are like, yes, I got it right. You could have it be bolder, again, like italics, different fonts. And this really can be used in any way that your students um, or that you want them to. You could give them one sheet. You could, could give all the sheets. Students could work through them all. Students could make their own. And then they simply change the conditional formatting to represent the spell check. So I really hope this has shown you how to create your own um, conditional formatting spell checks. These are always lots of fun and I'm really excited to get this one going in my classroom as well.